Why don't you tell us a little bit about Mark, eh? Yeah, uh, we spoke to Mark just a bit earlier to check comms. He's um, he's in the south of Colombia, and now he's got a couple of hours spare before he gets on a plane because he's appearing at uh, the big medical expo in Medellin this weekend in Colombia. Mm. Big gig, he goes there quite often. So he, he spends quite a lot of time in South America, and what we're going to do is try and get him up, and I'm sure he's online somewhere listening to me speaking. We haven't got a picture of him quite yet. But um, it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's, the it's the first birthday. It's the first birthday of Prohibition version, Prohibition uh, version, uh, version, 2.0, uh, version 2.0 in Canada. Canada. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons for the timing for having Mark on the show is we're expecting a lot of foreign internationals to kind of take this week in Cape Town. Nine months ago, nine months ago, when they catched the concept of Cape Town's Canatech, everyone shares were cooking. And now in the last sort of eight or nine months, they've all tanked. So we think a lot of them are going to come to the Canatech with their tails between their legs a bit because they can't tell us anything about forecasts and projections anymore. So we'd like, I just want to get first hand off Mark, who spent the summer in Toronto, how he feels about it. Mark, you can hear me, obviously, yeah? Good evening. Good morning to you. Hi. Hey, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Uh-huh. A big... Big demonstration right there. I can hear him, but not through. Hang on, folks. Uh, uh, just give us a second on this. Uh, hold on a minute, Mark. We're just trying to get the sound right in the studio. Hold on a minute. Is there power gone off on those speakers? Hmm? Here we go. Hello, Mark. Mark, can you hear me now? Hello. We can hear you. Sound great. All right, man, brilliant. Sorry, man, we just had an issue with a plug socket and a wild dog. Anyway, no, no, no. Well, what, what I'm explaining I'll to go, our, what I'm explaining to the viewers is why you're in Colombia. You're going up to Meadowland shortly for the expo. Just give us a, a brief outlook of what's going on in the background there, where you're staying at the moment. Okay, well, I've moved away from that because you wouldn't hear me. There's several thousand people next door. I'm at a hotel on the, uh, a hostel on the square in this town, Pita Lijo. We're near the Amazon Basin. And uh, this is a national day of demonstration in Colombia. I am wearing the Colombian national uniform, which is the football jersey of the Colombian national team. What are you saying, Jules? You're waving at me. No, I'm waving at the crew. It's cool. Carry on, carry on. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nobody can see that. So, um, so hundreds of people. By the way, can they see me? Yes. Yeah, no, you can. Loud okay, and clear. Good. Okay, so th there's the, uh, the football jersey for the Colombian national team, and thousands of people are wearing that today too, <laughs> just in this community, let alone all across Colombia. So um, it's an exciting day. There's been lots of dancing, singing, songs, national anthems, revolutionary songs, and, <coughs> and, inter <coughs> and interestingly enough, about 80 to 90 percent of these people are under 35. It's just staggering. A lot of young people. So here I am in Colombia because it's my favorite place in the world to visit, although South Africa comes a close second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it really does. I tell everybody I love South Africa, and if I wasn't starting to uh, break the law on December 19th, uh, as soon as my probation ends on December 18th, I'd be with you this winter. But I've got a job to do, and I'll probably get arrested, so I don't know when I'll see you again, really. <laughs> So t tell us a little bit about tell us a little bit about there the expo you're going to this weekend. I'd love to go, but it's a hell of a long way to go from Joburg. That is true. You'd think if there was a direct flight, it wouldn't be so bad. But uh, but it was like nine hours from Buenos Aires to Cape Town, so it's quite a way. The most charming expo in the world, in my opinion, is the one in. It's called Medellin, actually, and Colombians pronounce double L's as a J. So whereas in Spain or Mexico it might be called Medellin, um, here it's called Medellin, and it's the most charming expo in the world, Expo Medellin. It takes place in the Botanical Gardens. It's a gorgeous place to have an expo, because you essentially are outside with a beautiful nature-made uh, rattan wooden roofing structures all throughout the park. So if it were to rain, you would still be okay. Now we have to play a bit of cat and mouse smoking pot, 
because the local gendarme, actually, you're not allowed to smoke in the park. You could smoke anywhere else, but that's like 10 minutes to walk out of the park. So we're always smoking in the park. And the, the police are always kind of giving us the eye to suggest we should put it out. It's a wonderful time. There's also the uh, Medellin Cup. Now, there's going to be some great weed there. I've got 20, 30 samples waiting for me. Uh, beautiful <laughs> trophies, Jenny. And one of the things is I said Colombia was the fourth best place in the world to experience cannabis culture. The first three were the United States, and it's not even close. I get people saying, oh, surely Spain or Holland or Canada is better, is better weed than the United States. Not a chance. Virtually everything in the whole world is coming from California, Colorado, Oregon. You know, so for whatever people say, the U.S. is in a league of its own as far as cannabis quality goes. And then after that, I said it was Canada, which is largely British Columbia, actually. And uh, then after that, I said Amsterdam or Holland. Really. <coughs> and then Colombia. South Africa, by the way, is still in the top ten. I think I put you at number seven or eight. Um, Thank heavens for that. I would say you... Well, you guys have terrific cannabis. Yeah. Um, the only down... <laughs> the only downside might be the price is still somewhat higher than, say, Colombia. And for a tourist, they might not access it as easily as I did. Yeah. Um, but notwithstanding that, uh, South Africa is right there in the, in the top ten around the world. Um, but Colombia is number four. Uh, the best pot here is $5 U.S. a gram. Yo. And that's the absolute best. Wow. So it's really cheap. Every Colombian is allowed to grow 19 right. plants. So, and they can be very big plants. In mm. fact, they can be fucking huge plants. And they often <laughs> are. Where, on they earth often do they get, where did they get 19 from? That sounds really scientific. It's a, one of my favorite to, prime numbers. I know. It just has to be under 20. And so they, they picked the 20 as the, as the overage limit. So it's got to be 19. That's okay. But here's the thing. This is true also in Uruguay and uh, Colombia, is that veg plants don't count. You can have endless amounts of veg plants, but you can only have 19 flowering plants. That's really cool. Sure, that's quite an art form to work that one out in the end. So, hey, um, Jules, can, can, you, can you introduce me to the uh, crew? Because I met all of you. I don't know if I met the gentleman uh, third from the left, but... Uh, you were in the UK. Yeah, no, no, we did meet. no, we did meet. Yeah, no, you were right there. This is we Dan. Met. Dan is our grow expert. We met in that field. Oh, right, yes. I could, I did meet him, yes. So can you just give everybody their, their name again? And here's Joanne, uh, Myrtle's angel. I used to have dreadlocks when you came and sat on this couch. I cut Joanne, I'll always, I'll, always, I'll always remember your first remark to me. No. After the big break, and you came up to me and said, well, at least we didn't get raped. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well. Fuck. Yeah. Fuck. It was the first thing I ever said to his face. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, yeah, that was Welcome well. to South Africa. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yo, yeah, dreads well, are gone. I cut all my hair off. I've, ne I've never had a hello like that. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, well, you'll never forget. Well, now, now, we're laughing, but it was a very se serious mm -hmm. situation, of course, Jules. Um, I don't know if the people know this or you discuss those things. But um, of course, we haven't really discussed it. No, not really. It was just, um, uh, truth be known, you and I were in the middle of the Pondo land and there was an incident at home where there was a break-in and some physical action, and um, uh, I was well, helpless. It was terribly I, traumatic. I worked out, Mark, that it would have taken me less time to fly back from Amsterdam than it would have been to get you and I out of that valley and onto some tar and then onto a freeway and on the way home. It was hopeless, wasn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's... Now, selfishly, I will tell you that's the greatest trip I've ever had in my life when I was with you, <laughs> Jules. It was a magnificent time. We stretched across 2,000 kilometers of South Africa. Yeah. I met fabulous people. Incredible pot. Like, I mean, everywhere we saw. And you know what? I'm so grateful. And I realized there was a cost to that trip because you weren't home when uh, Myrtle was in, and uh, your crew were in this danger. And I felt a little bad. But I want to thank you for the best time of my life, including when I was on the hot box. Great show. Awesome. And I had a great time there. We loved cool. having you here. Yeah, that, um, <coughs> It was a really good distraction. <laughs> so, Mark, Mark yeah. you, 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 you're in um, South America now, but you've spent the whole of the summer back in Canada, and it's, I know it took you a bit of time to, re, to get back into the groove of being in such a grey and stuffy place. How's it going with you in Canada at the moment? 
Well, I wasn't getting back into the groove. That's the problem, is that all these legal jobs suck. I was waiting three months for this cannabis factory that got their license to hire me, but the economic situation for these licensed producers has so dramatically declined that now no one is investing in them. Everything is collapsing. Um, they're closing. They've laid off a thousand people. Get this. Legal cannabis factories have laid off 1,000 people in the last three weeks wow. throughout Canada. Um, the stock price is plummeting. Um, people aren't buying their crap. Um, the government's made it terribly difficult for them to even succeed, and they're not succeeding. Um, in Ontario, with 13 million people, after one year and one month of legalization, they have only issued 24 licenses for retail outlets in a province of 13 million, and there should be there should be well over 1,000 licenses for, for a jurisdiction of that size. The government is deliberately obstructing and stalling. This is true worldwide, by the way. There's absolutely not a single jurisdiction where the, <coughs> the, the government has kept faith with the people and made it a real legalization. It's still rules and regulations yeah. and exclusion and punishments and cops, 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 politicians, <coughs> exaggerated dangers. Jesus Christ. So what's happened is I tried to get a legal a job, a job in a legal factory, and you just get jerked around by these guys. There's so much chaos and so much panic, and they don't really even know people in the actual culture. Most of these big LPs are, are venture capitalists, and they don't even hire people who actually grew pot for a living. So it's the very strange situation. Anyway, it's driving me crazy, and I thought, fuck it, I'm off my probation on December 18th, I can't wait to break the law again, get arrested, <laughs> whatever, go to jail. It doesn't bother me. I can put me away for years for all I care. But anyway, all I notice is that these days my dick is a lot harder now that I've decided to become an outlaw once again. <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted for your um, change of libido, old friend. That's fantastic news. <laughs> Yeah, I had a kid. I put, I, put, I put that on Facebook earlier, and I'm sure some people thought that was too much information. But it's true. My whole libido, sex drive, everything, even my ability to get erections has been totally impaired for the last three months because I'm not doing anything. I'm so fucking bored. Okay. Uh, That'll do it. So breaking the law gives this so man now, a chubby. <laughs> now, I'll tell you guys, I don't know how many people in Canada are watching this show, but Jules, you are the only person in the world I have disclosed the full nature of what I'm up to on December 19th. And as you can see, I think we're going to try and affect 8 to 9 million people in my project. And you know what the project is. You've taken a look at it. And so um, it should be quite something. It should be big. It should be amazing. It's the best in the world at incredibly good prices, like prices you're not going to find in the legal market. So they're going to be infuriated. They're going to go crazy. Uh, most of what I'm selling is not available in the legal market. And uh, I'm already saying more than most anybody here in Canada even knows. But I can't wait till December 19th and to feel that rush, that danger. Um, uh, the law. We're going to tune in onto, onto Twitter and all the social media feeds to see this really big erection on the 19th. I'm sure it's... <laughs> king size, king size. King size, yeah. Yes. Um, so, um, let me ask you a question before we... Uh, <laughs> um, because the LPs are being strangled by the government, do you think that... Yeah, that is a shame. Well, it, I wish they weren't. Yeah, it, it would help if, it, if they weren't. But do you think... You know, we saw pictures of uh, Dana's dispensary getting raided for whatever yeah, great reason. Guy. So, what By are the they doing? Dana, Dana, Dana is South African. Yeah, yeah. Larson. Yeah. From Cape Town. Right. Well, he's a, he hasn't <coughs> been on the couch like you, but he's actually been on the show. But I haven't spoken to him since I saw the pictures of the dispensary going down. And is that a nationwide thing well, in, in Canada? They're shutting down. Oh. All medical. I don't understand. Oh no, no. Anything that's not licensed by the government. So Dane is not licensed by the government, and of course my cannabis culture wasn't licensed by the government. And all the best shops in Canada are the non-licensed ones. The licensed ones are look like Apple stores. They're very sterile. You can't really see weed. You can't smell it. 
Um, it's twice the price. There are five taxes in some jurisdictions, but a minimum of four throughout the entire country. Um, it's just ridiculous. And yet, despite the prices, everybody's losing money in the legal market. But you know who's not? Well, you know, it's funny. I say that. I was going to say, you know who's not losing money? I was going to say the government with all their taxes. But remarkably, the government is still losing money because they are the exclusive, they are the exclusive monopoly distributors in nine out of ten provinces, and they are the monopoly retailers in five of the provinces, and they're still losing money. Only the government could lose money their... selling weed to itself. That's lunacy. That makes the best sign in the world. Only the government could lose money selling weed. <laughs> so where's it going to go? Finally, Mark, where's it going to go in the next couple of years? Are the, are the stocks going to remain well, we, tanked for a while? Well, we, well first, first of all, we want to break the law. Like, not, yeah. bre not break it as in disobey it. I'll do that. But, I mean, crack it. Or finish it off. Uh, get it in the Supreme Court to be thrown out. Because it's unjust in so many elements. Discriminatory, prejudicial, uh, ridiculous, absurd, and I think in many cases illegal. It violates the freedom of speech, freedom of advertising. <clears throat> How can you have a legal item that you can only grow four of? Everything else that's... you uses the word legal, you could have a thousand of them. You could have a thousand bottles of wine in your home. Yes. You could have a thousand packages of cigarettes. You could have any vegetable, fruit, or commodity in your home, a thousand of them. I would say, dare say you could have a thousand guns in uh, some jurisdictions if you're if they're legal. But and they What about free. a rocket launcher? Um, but, you, <laughs> you, right, like, but you can't you can't have more than four plants for some reason. I mean, Quebec and Manitoba, you can't have any. No, nobody like me can sell cannabis legally. Um, it's just, it's just a shit show. It didn't legalize any of the people we wanted to legalize. It legalized all the people we hate, like the <laughs> cops and the politicians and big business. They got the exclusive franchises, more or less, to take over our culture in the most insidious, cynical kind of thing. But it's going to happen everywhere unless people say, well, fuck you. Yeah. We're going to do what we need to do. We're going to grow lots of pot. We're going to smoke a lot of pot. We're going to sell it to our friends. We're going to sell it to strangers and tourists. And we don't really give a fuck. Put us in jail. Like, I've been in jail a lot. What, six years, 39, 40 jails? I, I feel fine there. I'll write. I, you know, if anything, um, they're going to put me in jail anyway because I haven't paid all my fine from the last time they gave me a $200,000 <laughs> fine. In fact, the only way I can pay that fine, because there's no legal job paying me two, three hundred thousand dollars to pay a fine, is to go back on the, on the free market again. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Mark, as usual, man, it's an absolute pleasure catching up with you. you you're one of the most colorful can cannabis characters in the whole business. Hey, I love you, Jules, and I love Myrtle, too. You guys are the best. I, I can't wait to come back and see you guys again. And all the best to you. All right, man. Uh, we're going to look. We're going to watch your Facebook feed over the weekend in Meadowland and see how it goes down. I hope the weather's oh, yeah, great. Oh yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, yeah, check that out. All right. Thank you, Mark, for everything. Thanks, huh? Mark. Keep All right. Here. Sid. Bye, yeah, Mark. <laughs> Adios, amigo. So it's, it's basically how not to do it. It was like the, they went on the ticket of we're going to protect the children, we're going to kill the black market, and the kids yeah. don't really care that much. The kids know all about it, but they they doubled the black market because the weed shit and there's no shops open. Canada's a dumpster fire. I think we can all be real about that. Yes. It's like it's like it's like Wolf on Wall Street's for weed. It's like it's so fast, it's so hyped. Like dude, we saw Sam Oak selling a report. Sam Oak has never even been to South Africa. No, it's fuck all he's like in India or somewhere. Oh, yeah. He wrote oh, some, yeah. some report. Yeah. If you want to get this PDF off him it's a hundred thousand. No, six thousand, six thousand dollars. Yeah, six thousand US. Yeah. yeah, close enough. Hey, it's just not normal to get this off him. And I heard this oak spoke somewhere, and he knew nothing about the local market.